look at the capital. You know, people travel around the world to see the capital. And we get to see it every day. We're in the 2100 block of Mississippi Avenue. This area has a lot of deaf and hard of hearing individuals that live in this area. From sexual assaults, a male student at the Maryland School for the Deaf was hospitalized after allegedly being sexually assaulted. To theft. They say the victim in this case, who is deaf and nonverbal. Money fraud. We have new information tonight about a lottery scam targeting the deaf. So over in this area. So you see a lot of crimes over here, a lot. officers um, assigned to the deaf and hard of hearing unit. We have two officers, myself. The two of us take all calls. Um, we're notified about any and all cases that take place within the District of Columbia. Um, I became a police officer April 23rd, 1990. And once I graduated from the academy, I um, was assigned to the first district. From there, I um, worked in forensics, forensic science for a number of years. Um, during that time, I was a student and I was taking a culture class, deaf culture class, and I wrote a paper on the culture conflict between the police and deaf and hard of hearing. And so that's kind of how um, I started bringing the two culture worlds as I see it together. I was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1969. Then my family, we moved to South Carolina because my grandparents became ill. Next door um, was a young lady. She's a little older than I, than I am. Um, she was deaf and hard of hearing. Um, her name is Rowena Brown. Um, we played together as kids, and that's how her language became a part of my world today, um, because she was deaf and hard of hearing. And by playing together, meaning we had doll babies, um, we, how I learned the alphabet, she wrote A in the sand and showed me A, B, B, on and on. The alphabet became words, the words became phrases, and the phrases became my language today. You need help? Yeah. No, 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 it's okay. No, you got it in that mic. Huh? You got it in the Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We are going to 1825 Northeast. Um, this is a victim that I've known for over 20 years who we befriend each other. 
Um, he was, when I initially met him, he was a victim of a crime. And he's deaf as well. My name is Amen. Sometimes like Amen or Amen. I have an Egyptian accent, but that's okay. She's just amazing. And she's almost like a sister to me. And I've known her almost, I would say, about 15 years. You know, generally there's a problem with communication between police officers. You know, and often deaf people see police officers as a threat. Something happened at Gallaudet University. And the deaf person was innocent. Uh, whatever the situation was, they had gotten into a f fight with someone. But the officer misunderstood the situation and was ready to arrest the deaf person. And when the deaf person took out a pen and paper to write, the police officer thought that, you know, it was a threat. The person was going into their pocket. So it was kind of rough for that deaf person to experience being arrested and then forced out on the ground and tried to explain that they were deaf. But of course, the communication was just very confusing and there was a lot of misunderstanding. Okay. Sit down. As her daughters scream, she is put in handcuffs so she can no longer sign and drops her phone. Don't, don't, don't tell her to put her hands behind her back. Tell her to put her hands behind her back. There is something that officer not understanding the sign language, and first of all, they cannot talk. We automatically freeze and we don't know what to do. Now, all this year, we're trying to educate the officer um, at the PDT or academy. We go to the new officer about the deaf hour and hearing unit. So, whenever they are interacting with the deaf people, we understand their problem and trying to help them out and trying to come out with um, that, using our unit as leverage. Uh, before I knew her, I was a little nervous around police because of my past experience with police department. Oh, it was really tough to get interpreters. So I felt like I was lost in communication. I was going circles. I'd be in jail or prison and wouldn't have the uh, communication. And the, my being arrested wasn't a good experience. I would get hurt. And it was hard for me to trust the police, but ever since Myra, it's made it easier for me to feel comfortable with the police. I'm a CODA, child of a deaf adult. Both of my parents are deaf. I just met Officer Jordan this past year. Um, I know that she established the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Unit for the Special Liaison Branch here for MPD. And ever since that, I've built this relationship or established a relationship with Myra Jordan. Um, she's been someone that I look up to um, because everything that she stands for um, is something that I support and something that I could see myself doing in the future as well. So this is um, a VP, which is a video phone, and it allows the deaf to communicate with the hearing. And there's a live interpreter on one side, and then there's the deaf person that can call either a landline or a cell phone to communicate with a hearing person. And you can have this same VP downloaded on your phone. So I can either do it from my phone 
or from the computer screen. It's called TTY, Telephone Writing Unit. This is very old technology. We still are required to have it. And you can use it in two ways. Like if somebody called, you can just take it, put it here, and start typing. So older individuals who don't have internet services, they still can use a TTY machine to communicate with the police department. I attended Gallaudet for three years. Um, I did not graduate from there, but um, I wanted to enhance my communication and my love for the language. And in order to do so, I needed to surround myself with deaf and hard of hearing individuals, not just from a classroom setting, but from a community setting as well, because you can learn so much out of the classroom, or just as much out of the classroom than in the classroom. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Daniel Bauer, and I work for, worked here for almost 16 years. Since 2017, work, working with her, like we've seen each other in passing, different situations that have come up, she's always there for us. She's always helping us through sticky situations, whether it's good or bad. Um, Officer Jordan has always been there to support. When I was hired um, as a police officer, I climbed the ranks, um, and then she kind of led me to be a better officer here on campus. And they looked at us and viewed us the same. And one time I was feeling like nothing, and um, she said, no, you and I are the same. Myra Jordan, would tell me that we're the same. You're climbing the ranks and there's lots of people who uh, have become better officers because of Myra Jordan and I'm one of them. It just popped in my head today. I want to do a Christmas dinner for Deaf Reach. Okay. And I want to us to serve them. When do you want to do it? I figured we would look at our calendar and see what is available for all of us. So I retired um, about four years ago um, after serving 26 years with the Metropolitan Police Department. And I stayed off for a few months, but my love for the community, um, I wanted to come back and continue to serve the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Unit. Deaf Reach is a nonprofit organization that deals with deaf and mentally ill or secondary disabilities. Um, deaf Reach have been around for a long time and they have a very special place in the heart. It's so funny because one member said that she's been there for three, 33 years and don't have any family to even come visit her. So every year we go and we celebrate her birthday. Some of their families have just thrown them away to this group home and not reach back and try to develop a relationship. It's me, it's Myra. You feel the badge and see it's me, Myra. <laughs>
see you happy. I want to see you happy. I'm old woman. I'm an old woman. You're an old woman? Mm, love. Love you. My future goal before I leave the police department or retire from the police department, I would like to see other um, officers or to expand the deaf and hard of hearing unit. I would like to see those officers take the deaf and hard of hearing unit to the next level. And me personally, I would like to go work in a nonprofit deaf and hard of hearing agency once I finally retire from the police department.